Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for April 26th, 2021. So last week we were filled with daily whipsaws and big point moves to boot that likely challenged a lot of traders and likely saw a lot of accounts getting chopped up in that whipsaw. But this week, oh my goodness, this week we have a tremendous week of data coming our way. So how about we grab ourselves something to drink, let's settle in, buckle up, and let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Well, good morning once again, everyone. I hope you all had a restful week. And hopefully you got up this morning and put on your big boy pants and laced up those shoes tight because we have a big week of data that can certainly move the market. We're gonna to have to be very, very flexible and be very, very on point with our trading anything is possible this week. So how about we dive into these technicals, see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for the day and start looking through the data points that will be tossed at us that could move us around considerably. First off, let's take a look at the Dow here. As you can see, the diamonds is looking very, very strong, continuing to hold up in this upside trend. We just really have no signals in here of uh, bearishness um, at this point. However, we do have the incredible danger of these big whipsaws that we've seen in the market. You can see this morning we've got Dow futures trying to edge a little higher, but let's take note of what we've got going on here. First, yesterday we were unable to break down below that level, but unfortunately even with that Friday surge back up, we were not able to break through the resistance high either. So we're kind of locked in this 300, 350 point chop range that adds an awful lot of danger when we're heading into a week of just a phenomenal amount of data. So keep an eye on that. Um, anything is possible. There is certainly that possibility of danger. Now, one of the things with all the data that we have coming our direction, we should be prepared for the possibility of morning gaps, large morning gaps that could go either direction. We should be prepared for um, um, those complete reversals that can occur overnight as well as intraday whipsaws and just considerable volatility with the data that we have coming at us this week. So make sure that if you are trading that you don't over trade and be careful chasing or rushing based on that fear of missing out. That emotion can really get you into trouble in a market like this and wake up the next morning and oh my gosh, everything has changed. So be really, really careful and cognizant of the fact that there is considerable danger in all of this data. Let's take a look at the SPY. Now SPY, also that wide range of chop. And although we did a better job here on the SPY and we really pushed up, notice that we were not able to break through that resistance high. We struggled with that level up there. And holding on to this support, I think is a great sign, but let's keep in mind that we are still extremely elevated off of this trend. And it, it's really gonna depend on how this data rolls out, whether we're going to be very, very bullish or if we're gonna um, whipsaw to the other side. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, pretty dangerous market with these big point moves. And it is entirely possible um, that, although we're expecting lots of um, lots of volatility with all of the news data, that the market just goes yawns and says ho-hum and we just don't do much of anything. So anything is possible today or this week, um, be very, very cognizant of that fact. Let's take a look at the Qs. Now QQQ, also showing um, lots and lots of strength, very, very bullish, but also showing that extended condition. Notice that throughout the week we 
what we're not able to break down through that support but we really didn't get a whole lot of results in here in breaking back through that price level so and the the highs of the market so we still have some question marks here in these charts and it really is going to come down are these big tech giants going to be able to produce enough earnings results to push us on through or have they already been priced in with the incredible rally that we've seen um, so far? Just, just imagine if one or more of them happened to stumble, what um, could be created because we are so extended um, in this market. If, if one were to stumble, the, the kind of point pullback could be pretty dramatic. So just keep a close eye on it. Let's take a look at IWM. Now IWM, actually had the best day on Friday that we've seen here for a while, pushing up and just testing that resistance level in the chart, not quite poking through. We're trying to poke through this morning, but let's keep in mind that we're still in kind of a range bound um, chart here with a resistance high. We're getting fairly, fairly close to that resistance high. If we can bust through this. So there's still some work here to do um, with the financials and energy sectors just kind of uh, milling around a little bit. They were a little bit better on Friday, but still just kind of struggling. We also have to keep in mind and not discount the fact that we've had rising lows in here. So anything is possible, be prepared. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX has been doing about the same thing that a market has been doing. Big point moves, whipsawing around um, with daily reversals. Oh, we're going up. No, we're going down. No, we're going, wait, let's go down. And so <laughs> pretty crazy uh, price action in the chart, which doesn't give us a whole lot to work with other than we continue to hold underneath this resistance level. And I think that is bullish for the market. If we can hold underneath that price resistance, stay below that 20 handle in the VIX, I think we're in pretty decent shape there. We need to maintain this downtrend. If we were to get some reason, some stumble in the market, that could be a bit of a problem and we could perk back up. Um, so we're gonna have to kind of keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at our um, T2122. Now, T2122, the four week new high, new low ratio, little bit of a problem for us here heading into today. First off, we are already extremely elevated in T2122. This is telling us that we're up there in that bearish reversal zone. Now, of course, we can continue if we can get those good earnings reports and good economic data coming our way. We could certainly continue to try and press this to the upside. But just keep in mind, the more and more we press to the upside, the more and more extended we could become in that possibility of that stumble could bring in that big point move back to the downside. So watch that carefully and closely. One thing I want to caution everyone on is be careful not to chase stocks that are already shown to be in an extension. If you chase those stocks and they happen to, if we do happen to get that stumble in the market, it could be a pretty painful pullback. So make sure you're buying those stocks in really good secure places at or near price support levels. Make sure that your risk on those trades to your stop loss is, um, is tolerable because this market could prove to be very emotional with big, big whipsaws, big reversals overnight that can be painful if you're over trading. Let's take a look at our T2101. Now, I got to tell you, whoops, T2101. T2101 continues to be a little bit baffling in the fact that we're pressing, 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 pressing to the upside, and we just, we're just not getting um, that market breadth to show us anything. Now, perhaps that picks up this week. We'll have to wait and see. But this thing has been sinking hard here in the market and not a good sign overall. So 
we're kind of going opposite on our market breadth as we are in um, our overall indexes. We're going to want to keep a close eye on that as the week progresses. Perhaps we start picking up. Um, maybe we'll want to see if that news brings in those uh, that breadth to uh, fire us up. We'll have to wait and see. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now our economic calendar, we're going to have to pay attention to it. First off this morning, we have durable goods orders. That is certainly a market moving potential report. Let's take a look at the consensus here on that. You can see the consensus is looking for a little increase. Um, well, not even little. Um, 0.2 is what they're looking for. So they're looking for an increase of those durable goods orders that could be bullish for the market. It could also bring out the warriors um, for um, inflation. If that number gets too hot, we'll want to watch that carefully. Um, Treasury yields are ticking a little bit higher this morning. And um, Wells Fargo came out with a report this weekend saying that they expect um, um, the the recent little lag that we've seen in um, bond prices to start to surge back higher um, at any time. So whether they're right or not, I don't know, but that's out there in the news. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. Then just remember, guys, that um, tomorrow we, be, we begin the FOMC meeting. We're going to have a busy, busy week of data with consumer confidence coming in, international trading good, petroleum status, and then the FOMC announcement and press conference, um, followed by the GDP and jobless claims coming in. Um, we've got home data in here as well, and we're not going to even get a break here on Friday with personal incomes and outliers for those major market movers. So it's going to be a busy, busy week. And then on the earnings calendar, oh my goodness, it's going to be a crazy uh, week. Uh, we're going to kick off the tech titans today with Tesla after the bell. We'll want to keep an eye on that. Notice that Tesla is still struggling in this little consolidation area here and still possibly underneath a downtrend. So it's going to be important how they report, um, which way we might go here on Tesla. Keep keep a close eye on that. That'll be the first up. And then on Tuesday, we've got Google and Microsoft. Wednesday, we've got Facebook. Amazon comes in Thursday. And we have um, hundreds of companies reporting this week to move us around. So let's take a look at today. Well, first off, if we take a look at the earnings today, we have um, uh, more than 70 companies reporting. And by the way, guys, um, I'm going to bring up a few of the notables today, but I'm going to ask you to please click the link below the title of the video. That'll take you back to the morning blog. And that's where you can get the full list of potential notables on the day. Let's take a look at a couple here. Um, ACI, we've already looked at Tyson. ACI, reporting this morning looks like they've disappointed just a little bit here they've been running in this upside trend but this pink pink candle right here is showing us the pre-market activity it looks like we had just a little bit of a pop and drop um, so far this morning so keep a close eye on that um, cni canadian railway will be reporting today keep a close eye on it looks like at the moment they're looking at a gap up open right here that little pink dash up there. They're trying to move a little bit higher, so keep a close eye on that. Um, how about um, PK, PKG? That will be reporting today. Um, keep an eye on PKG, LII, will be reporting today. That's going to be an inch. It looks like a pop and drop so far today. They gapped up and pushing back. So watch that, putting in a little pre-market hammer or inverted hammer pattern there on the chart. Uh, VALE is on the list as well. Now keep in mind, guys, as these earnings wrap up, um, ramp up, um, I won't be able to cover all of the earnings reports that could be notable. So please make sure you click that link, go back to the blog, you can get that full list and go through it yourself and see if it makes any sense to you as to possible trade setups. 
Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, if you guys could do me a favor, if this is the first time that you have seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that uh, bell icon when it pops up so that you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. Keep in mind everyone that the purpose of these videos is not to provide hype or drama or anything else. There's plenty of that out there in the market and on social media. What we're trying to do is take a look at the technicals, take a look at the details of what could move the markets today and assess how we want to approach the market. So if you find these to be helpful, please do me a favor. Click, uh, click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment. Helps the channel to continue to grow and I wanna say thank you for those of you who do that. And also thank you so much to those that are uh, supporting the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link that's just below the title of the video. You guys are awesome. Truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. How about we take a look at the stock setting up and remember guys that as I bring these stocks up, these are not a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Um, please keep that in mind that anything is possible this week and you have to do your own due diligence um, on each and every one of these trades. So first off, let's take a look. I've been keeping a close eye here on Target. Now Target is going to be reporting um, here on 519 and notice that it's been in this nice little tight consolidation up here if this can find any kind of reason to to get bullish if in the market then that pop out and we could continue to extend this upside move and target watch that one closely pretty nice chart not exactly ready for prime time here just yet but definitely worth keeping an eye on let's keep an eye on some of these consumer defensive um, type companies, um, some of the old um, boring dividend payer type companies. Take a look at SWKS. SWKS trying to move through. We had a little bit of volatility here with the week, um, dropping and popping, but keep a close eye on that. If we can hold up in here, there is that opportunity we could push on higher in that chart. I think we should take a look at the financials and keep a close eye on it. Now the financials had a pretty good day on Friday, but let's make note of the fact that it was just a week of reversals. We did bad, we did good, we did bad, we did good. Um, it could be an interesting week here if um, we continue to see those kind of whipsaws. But what I do like about this chart is that we pushed just a little bit higher here on Friday. We saw a little bit more enthusiasm coming into um, those financials. So any rest in here that holds a higher low could set up an opportunity for an entry into XLF. Notice we could just move along a trend like this. So keep a close eye on it. Um, XLF could be trying to come around. Um, energy, on the other hand, has been just kind of struggling. We can't seem to get her going here on that energy front. And that could continue to have some ramifications here for um, IWM. But keep a close eye on that. We are still clinging by our fingernails to this downtrend break. We broke that downtrend and now we're trying to hold that level in here. And we're just clinging to it, trying to see if we can move. One thing we, we did miss out on though, we missed out on this trend. We broke that trend sliding out here. So uh, this still has that possibility it could go either direction, but it's worth keeping an eye on. Let's take a look at Masco. Masco um, ahead of all of this, well, all of this talk, of infrastructure uh, spending. Um, keep an eye on this. Masco is looking pretty good and holding up nicely. Had a good day on Friday popping through and I need to adjust the trend line here, but um, popping through on Friday, maybe trying to extend on up today. I want to keep an eye on that chart. I think you might also want to keep an eye on some of the steel out there. Take a look at MT. Now, 
I personally have a bias on this trade because I am holding MT, but MT pushing on through. This is steel. Steel is going, going to be a big deal if we do move forward with an infrastructure uh, bill. Let's take a look at STLD. Steel Dynamics is also in that nice little consolidating pattern try to push up here on Friday that possibility that that could push on through we've got Cleveland uh, cliffs that could be in that steel move trying to break this little downtrend that it's in here could perk on up and last but not least um, take a look at US steel trying to press through this resistance high right now so keep a close eye on that if we can get some if there's news or anything that they're going to come together on an agreement um, that possibility that we could start moving here um, in those charts i also i think it'd be remiss if i didn't bring up the possibility of silver and gold take a look at slv holding in this little upside trend and let's notice if we take a look at our moving averages that we broke through that 50-day moving average this little resting pullback in here to try and hold it as support is something i want to pay attention to if we can get some bullishness coming in off of that take a look at that possibility of silver and then if we take a look at gld gld already made that move up through its 50-day moving average and this pullback that we received um, later last week, pulling back into to some support. If um, this can hold in here, watch for that opportunity maybe to pick up some gold to the upside. And that may have some merit if we continue to see these bonds um, moving to the upside. So watch that closely. I think we also need to take a look at some of these old boring companies that are trying to come up out of bottoms. Now certainly we saw an ugly little selling here on Friday here on Clorox. It's been back and forth and it's possible this could just absolutely fail at this point but it may be worth keeping an eye on um, coming up out of these bottoms. These big divvy payers are doing pretty well. And I have to bring up stocks like AT&T, um, those big old boring companies. Notice how we popped here on earnings. We're holding up well. Just keep in mind if, if AT&T can deal with this resistance level up here, there could be some nice upside opportunity here in AT&T. And I've also got to put Verizon um, into that. Now it pulled back here on Friday, but keep a close eye on that if that can continue to hold in here. These Divi pairs doing really, really well. I'm going to give 3M um, the big kudos here. I'm still holding 3M. Um, and this has just been, and this is a weekly chart. This was the entry for members of Rightway Options. And by the way, guys, I want to remind everyone that we have an, um, a really cool app in the service. And what it does is when I post a trade alert, you don't have to be in the trading room. You can be at work. You can be wherever, you know, driving down the road and you're going to get the trade alert on your smartphone. So keep an eye. Um, think about that if that's of interest to you. But there's a very simple trade. And um, we've taken no heat on the trade. Just beautiful profits in that position. And that continues to show that bullishness as it moves on up. So guys, there's a few charts for you to take a look at, a few of you, a few that might be of interest to you. I wanna wish everyone a fantastic day and I wanna caution everyone once again to just be really, really careful not to chase or over trade this market. We've got big data coming our way that could move us around significantly. So we're gonna to have to be on our toes and really be flexible. Everyone take care, be safe, and we'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Have a great one.